Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hey everybody, it's Sunny and Shar. Today is September 28th, 2018, and boy, uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, yesterday was a crazy day uh, for... Our, our society, our government, it was the Kavanaugh uh, legal interrogation, and there was so much going on. But, you know, bottom line is, whatever happens with that, because we still don't know, the truth is something that we all have a relationship with. And bottom line is, even if in this physical body the truth doesn't always happen, our spiritual and our spirit, our soul, and our ethereal body always end up having karma. And that is where the truth always wins out. So no matter what happens in life, and, you know, there's so many people who are in prison and shouldn't be, and eventually, I, I'm not saying it's that it's fair that people are suffering, but eventually, karma wins out and, and makes it fair for everybody. I just want to say that because it's so frustrating for so many people. Anyway, so, okay, now, my friend is here today. But this is really my friend. This is Dean Benowitz, everybody. And I don't know if you've seen him. You probably have. You've probably seen him on TV because he sells products and QVC and home shopping and all those shows. But he is the, the hairstylist to so many stars in, in Shark Tank and Battle for Stardom and A Christmas Story and America's Got Talent and... American Idol and Rising Star and The X Factor. And I mean, he's got so many famous clients that I guess I can say them because you, you, you put them down here, right? Oh, yeah. Ellen DeGeneres. Wow. Britney Spears. Simon Cowell. He came in today. He said, oh, I just got back yesterday from, from um, Washington and Simon called and I had to go all the way to Malibu to cut his hair. And it's like, you know, this is like... Normal for this guy. This is routine for him. And um, Steve Carell and oh, Linda Blair. How did you get Linda Blair to sit still when her head's always going Trust around in a circle? Trust me. <laughs> I think I can do her hair because I've never watched that movie. Oh. It would oh. freak me out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't get into. How, how did you get start with hairstyling? How did you begin this? Well, I, um, I was going to the University of Iowa for... Uh, Art education and art history. Uh -huh. And two years in, I I was like, I don't want to teach and I don't want to work in a museum. So I'm like, what am I doing here? And so I remember I reached out to my brother, Leon, number 12. And I was like, Leon, Wait, here's the deal. Just so you know, <laughs> Leon, number 12 means there's 15 in his family. And yes. he's your number I'm number 13. And we have a whole okay. Dewey Decimal System. Okay. So, like, if you and I married, you'd be 13.0. If we had children, 13.1, <laughs> 13 13.2. 13. So, I'll get an email and it'll say number 13, blah, 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 blah. And it'll be signed 4.4. .4. So, I'm like, Judy Alice Dolores Lloyd is my brother Lloyd's fourth kid. Tasha Tanya Brody Brandy. It's my niece Brandy. Send me an email. It's crazy. So, it's insane. But so, I, I call my brother Leon and I'm like, I, I, I was kind of at a crossroad and I, I didn't really know what to do. And he was like, you need to do hair. And I was like, 
why would you even say that? He goes, I have an ad agency. I know how much I have to pay hair and makeup people to do photo shoots. And he was like, for the love of God, you used to braid the tails on the cows. Just do hair. (laughs) Tell them where you're from. (laughs) From Iowa. (laughs) But, you know, it was crazy because I was like, really? And he goes, I'm telling you, you have a great personality. You have a great eye for art and design and balance. He goes, just do it. And I was enrolled in beauty school two weeks later. And I never ever. And how long back. ago was that? Um, I I graduated in ninety two, so like twenty six years ago, twenty six, twenty seven. Seriously, this man is so gifted. Uh, we had a Leo birthday party. <laughs> it was fun. And he, it was so much fun, and he invited me, which I was so honored. And because I because my best friend gets his hair done by you, and so Stuart Krasnow, and so and and Freddie, and and anyway, all 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 my. A whole favorite troop. gay boys. So anyway, so <laughs> the table that he sparkled, the table, I wish I had a photo of it. It sparkled. It was incredible. It was like, and the food was amazing. And his house is incredible. And he has a magical wall made of jewels. And it's big. It's like just a how many feet yeah, is that wall? It's the whole dining room wall. It's a mosaic. It's all crystals from Christie Alley. And Tiffany Miller, who is the artist, did an awesome job on it. But it's my family tree. It's his family tree. It's and pretty it's amazing. absolute. I wish I had a. Do you have a photo of it on your phone? Yeah, I, I'm sure I do have yeah, a Yeah, I probably should have asked you to send, send us one. But anyway, we had the best time. It was so much fun. And you know what the thing is, is. Uh, everybody likes to take you out for dinner and everything. I'm like, let's just all get together and just have a great night. Yeah, it was just it was awesome. incredible. Thank you for inviting me to of that. Of course. Okay, okay. So back to braiding the cow's tails. Yeah. So I, I would always braid the, you know, that I thought the to- the cows looked really cute. My dad, not a fan of me braiding anything on the farm. <laughs> he was just like, milk the cows. I'm like, oh. I can't do this for the rest of my life. Maybe that's why I'm gay. I had to touch too many udders. <laughs> anyway, but that's I, so I, I enrolled at Bill Hills College of Cosmetology, and it literally was in the back of a furniture carpet warehouse, and that's where I went to beauty school, and I loved it, and I worked it, you know, and I, I just really enjoyed it. It was really awesome. Okay, so when you do all these shows, like, like, wait, is there? Well, the show that I literally just finished was Shark Tank. And over the summer, I had um, So You Think You Can Dance. I, on Monday, I starred American Idol and World of Dance, JLo's new dance show on NBC, which is so, in, so incredible. Do you do JLo's fun. hair? I don't do JLo's hair, but I do the 500 plus contestants and Derek Huff and anybody else. I'm, I'm the department wow. head, so I'm responsible for everybody's hair and I make sure that it, everything is on point. Wow. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a big responsibility. <laughs> I think there's a couple of days where I have like 18 hair people working hair. And the thing that I didn't that when I read earlier about you that you that you did the Hunger Games. Yes, I was one of the five builders. Those hairdos were so crazy. <laughs> did you do those? It was, it was crazy. It was for the for the second one, Catching Fire. Right. And I built 500 different hair pieces. So, you know, for a show like that, Linda Flowers was the department head who hired me. Mm -hmm. Love her. But, you know, the thing is, is when they when you when they hire builders, they don't want one person to build the entire show because then it's very one sided. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have five people, their creative energies. We build different things to our liking and it's all futuristic. Mm -hmm. And then when we come together, we have all of these pieces and we interact and and put things together. One of the things I loved with Hunger Games, because it was futuristic. Mm-hmm. I mean, just imagine I would blow up a balloon, tie an, a hair extension to the neck of that balloon, mm-hmm. put gel on that hair and sculpt it to the balloon, let it dry, pop that balloon, boom, you've got some really cool hair you can put on somebody's That's head. That's so smart. Boo, it's like gay arts and crafts. I live for it. <laughs> like if I can glitter and jewel something, it is on. My goodness. It's super fun. And that's that's why I love So You Think You Can Dance so much because I, you know, in, in the beginning of the week, I'll get creative notes and they go, your inspiration for this number is imagine a snow globe came to life. And like, look, I get gay bumps just thinking about it. Right. Because you get so excited to do because that. Because I'm like, I love pushing myself. 
mm -hmm. outside those boundaries to really create something that's different and magical. You know, like this past season, they go, imagine Alexander McQueen and Galliano having lunch. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my God, that's like you have free reign because both of them were so incredibly creative. But well, I love that. Yeah. I mean, th your whole life is so magical like that. You and you've really always fun. been very intuitive ever since I've known you. You've always been really perceptive. I have a good vibe of people. Yeah. But, you know, that, and I don't I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but. I am super open and mm -hmm. I love to help and I love to to kind of be a catalyst for those for a lot of people to, that are starting out or whatever. Uh -huh. But there's there's a moment when if I ever feel like I'm being taken advantage of, I sense it immediately. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And you start to shut it down. Yep. I I'm the I'm the same. You you know you you get that but it's that energy that I really thrive on because if somebody has that enthusiasm, it right. feeds me. And you want to and you like to be appreciated because yeah. everybody should be appreciated. Everybody loves to be accepted but, and, but and you know acknowledged. You, you wrote like an, a, a really special book, I and did. it's called The Dean's List of Daddy's Do's. Yep, The Dean's List of Daddy's Do's. It's a self help step by step guide for dads to do their kids' hair. Because how I, adorable is that? I was like, my sisters complained constantly about my, you know, brother and brother. Tony has it up on the screen. It's so it's so crazy, and I love that cover because I was I did it myself. I self published through Amazon, and I was like, I have you to did? do something fun for that cover. So I we shot that in my in my carport. How it was the best? How many editions are there? This is just this is the very first one I did. I it came out uh, a year and a half ago. Oh, it's new. Yeah, and it's really great because I teach dads how to do hair utilizing different techniques that you wouldn't think about. So, like, I teach them how to braid hair using the cables on the back of the TV because there's three and they're color-coded. So go in your little workshop or your office and practice oh. braiding those cables before you touch your daughter's hair. What a because good Because if you idea. mess it up on the first round, no bueno, she ain't going to let you touch her anymore. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I go switch it, to put it in a ponytail, divide that ponytail into three, use a red, yellow, and white ponytail tie, and just pretend it's now cables and braid her hair. It's going to be amazing. But there's so many fun little tips and tricks. Like what else? Well, you know, it's like the ballerina bun. Or like, say you have like you, I don't know how to do a ballerina bun. It's really it's pretty awesome, but like it's very this it's kind of eye opening for me too because I have a client who's divorced, and his ex wife was holding it over his head that you can't have her over the weekend because she's got a dance recital. You don't know how to do her hair. Oh, and I go oh no, I'm gonna empower dads to spend more bonding time with their kids. Right. And, you know, like one of my favorite tips and tricks. If you have a ponytail and you know how little kids it just slides out. Right. It's like hard to really hold it in. My tip is cooking thread. Cotton thread, dip it in water, squeegee it, tie it around that ponytail tie really tight, cut off the loose ends, and just let it dry. Because as it dries, it constricts and it locks that ponytail in. The loose ends of the string. Well, the string, you, you the string, it's a regular cotton string, you know, tying up the chicken right. legs, right? Right. But after that ponytail is oh, in, oh, you really are from the farm. You squeegee <laughs> that out and wrap that around and tie it like it's a regular ponytail tie, and as it dries, it just really tightens up and it locks that ponytail. That's that's a dancing trick. That's what I've used on Dancing with the Stars. So you think you can dance, world of da anything, dance, because it just helps to lock it in. So. I it's was, like MacGyvering hair. I was thinking about <laughs> MacGyvering hair. You're so funny. You know, I was thinking about you're so you're so fun to be with, and I would think that you're, a lot of your clients just like coming to see you because you make them happy, and that you're you fun have to, to have fun, and that you're fun, and you yeah. always have fun. Well, you have to have fun, and you're a Leo, and you know how to have fun. It's a good time. But um, I wondered, I I always wonder. Why do, and I've noticed this, and I've even said some things that, why am I telling my hairdresser this? Oh, girl, if you but even knew half the stuff the people tell me. Like, they don't even tell their best friends. Oh, no. But I, and I, the thing is, is it's so funny, because like we were talking about Simon, he's never had me sign an NDA, because he trusts me. I would, I, oh, I, of course. I could write novels, but why would I? He's such a right. really close friend. And the thing is is when you have that trust, that's why he flies me all over the world to cut his hair, and that's why I have a really strong base of celeb clients mm -hmm. that are really good friends, right? but they trust me and I trust them, and they're always really great to me. 
Right. But it's amazing what you hear. But, you know, to trust somebody is so important. I mean, that's the greatest gift. That's the first thing in a relationship that needs to be. Right. And, you know, sometimes, because I have a private studio, and sometimes people just need to talk. Right. Whether or not I can fix anything or help in any way, sometimes it's just really great to listen. He's got the cutest little boy, Simon. Oh, my God. Adorable, Eric. He's so cute. And personality galore. He's a funny kid. Is he? Oh, my God. He's adorable. And it's 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 hilarious because I'll cut Simon's hair and they're like, we're going to have Dean cut your hair today. I don't want Dean to cut my hair. And then he'll just go like (gasps) it's he's hilarious. Oh, he's got an accent. Oh, 100 percent. And he comes in and he's like, I'm going to eat my um, chocolate from the sweet shop while you cut uh-huh. my hair. I was like, OK, <laughs> do what you need to do. But Wait, I, I think he's. Do they live in England as well? He has a house in London, uh, Malibu, and I think just in I know, the flats. In yeah, I know that Beverly there's Hills. another place, too, that it's none of anybody's business that. I don't know if I on know an, of. And an island. And an island. It could, don't talk many, about it. There are many We islands. won't talk about it. Only because I used to spend a lot of time visiting that place. Oh, yeah. So, not, not him. Not him. <laughs> but that island. But I've anyway. I've been to that island many times. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, I know. And so, okay. So, um, w- when people come and sit in your chair and they just start talking to you, you're like, you have to be an intuitive. Right. You have to be a therapist. And... Are there are there any like crazy stories that you have to tell about that? Well, back in Iowa, because I had I had um, three salons in Iowa, and this <laughs> this woman Kathy would come in and get her haircut, full of personality, uh-huh. and she comes in, and this I, this day was very different. I don't I really couldn't figure out what was going on, and I go, hey Kathy, how, I go, how do you want your hair today? And she goes, I don't care what you do, just just cut my hair to make my boobs look bigger. I'm having a bad day. And I was like, and I had never, no one had ever said that to me. So I was like, so one of my assistants was shampooing her. While she was getting a shampoo, I called her office. And I talked to the secretary and I go, listen to me. When she comes in, you tell her how big her boobs look when she goes back to work. Right. And then she, and I go, you tell everybody in the office to comment how busty she looks today. <laughs> it was, and I, and my receptionist, everybody was in on it. So, and we, I just pretended like nothing was happening. I cut her hair, get her all done. She looked amazing. She goes out to the front desk. And um, my receptionist, Wendy, was like, girl, you look so good. You know, and just, it was, it was hilarious. And she goes, she, she called me later on that night. She goes, Dean, I don't know what the hell you did, but we are doing this haircut from now on. <laughs> and it was the best because I was like, she just needed to elevate a little bit. She needed to feel better about herself Right, and day. she needed to, to have a better stance and yeah. she felt better, so she looked better. And it was funny, she left that salon and, you know, she's like, her shoulders are back and she's feeling like a new woman, which is what I want. So, so you know, we, we all, I always say that we, um, we live in a physical world and we live in an energetic world and energetically we all have you know like positive and negative and whatever kinds of energy around us so when someone sits in your chair you have to feel their energy right yes but here's the biggest thing and um i love your cd because thank you your protection chakra of not picking up energy yeah i'm very aware of that because when i when i do hair and and this you know, we all have energy and we leave energy wherever we go. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if I'm cutting your hair and you're having a bad day uh-huh. and you're almost you're kind of negative And I mean, we try to be as bright as we can. But the first thing I do yeah. is sweep your hair and get rid of that negative energy from your body. I'm very. That's amazing. I'm very, very aware of that. Like, I, you know, you go into some salons or barbershops and there's just hair everywhere and to me that's like chaos energy everywhere right I'm like clear that clutter get rid of that get rid of that negative energy you need a fresh start for a new client so you feng shui it almost uh, uh, always always and if people you know like if, if have you ever told anybody this um i don't really think i have but i mean because probably no one ever really has asked you about because it's just the energetic world around all you. of it like towels combs i, I just clear that space so so one time, I I used to go to a famous hairdresser when I first came to Los Angeles, and 
he did people on TV and blah, 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 and whatever. But I remember waiting for him for two hours because he had a very famous... Right. I'm I'm just going to tell you, he had a very famous model in his chair and she had really long hair and he cut it all off and she literally was in his chair and I had to go. I had, I had things to do. She was in her, in his chair going like this. Dying. (laughs) Like trying to make her hair longer. He cut it all off. Uh, it's crazy. So how do you deal with these? Like, are, I mean, I'm sure there's most of them are nice, the celebrities. Do you know what? Well, I, I'm really fortunate because I have that ability to pick and choose who I want to do. Oh, are you lucky? Do you fire people? I, I don't fire them because when I start to do their hair, I can tell if they're going to be, you know, evil or whatever. Right. And... I change my frame of mind, and I will kill them with kindness. I will make them love me so much, Aww. and I will never be available again. I won't fire oh. them, but I will. I'm, I, you know what? I'm so right, busy. right, right, right. I'm traveling, and they want it now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I would so love to love to do that, but I'm I'm in Denver or. I'm traveling for. Well, that's very wise. That's a wise way to, way to do it because they still love you and yeah, they can't get into you. And, but I and you know the thing is you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Of and course not. The thing is is, it, and I work. I work to make them love me. I will go above and beyond. I want to yeah. under. I want to you know under promise and over deliver all the time. But it's like I need to make sure that you have a positive reaction with me, even if I never touch you again, because that's powerful to me. Okay, that is profound that is really a I wise don't want that negative energy even in the universe towards me That's, i don't i just don't want see that. you you're so naturally intuitive and you know when you and have, you're a healer oh <gasps> you're a healer i just realized that <laughs> you're a healer but you know when you have a disagreement with someone yes and you just want them to rot in hell you know, right. whatever. Just keep it real. <laughs> I I say he's a healer, and then he's telling I, me he wants no, but, to be right now. But uh, but uh, this is what I do. Right. Anytime I have a negative thought in my mind, I literally out loud, I wish them well. I wish that's them so, well in their life. That's so smart. I have I have. That's only, good karma. I only have good thoughts for them. That's such good karma. And that's I, so and, smart. And I literally send it out because. If I if I don't send it out, it starts to get me. Right, and it starts to kind of fester inside and kind the of energy break me down a bit. Yeah, yeah, and I understand I, that. And even if it's a little tinge of a thought, I'm like, uh, uh-uh. yeah, wish you well on yeah. your journey, your life. Yeah. yeah, I'm just not part of that life anymore. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, wow. But that's even. I mean, I would never wish anybody to burn in hell. But but if <laughs> you know, you have that negativity, and the best way for me to counter that is to just wish them well. Kill them with way. kindness. Yep. Right? Always. But always, then you always. keep the the vibe and the energy positive. Always. And I send that out. Yeah, well, it's in your house because his house is like a vortex. Literally, his house is like nobody wanted to leave. It's, I'm always the first one to say, okay, I have to go because I have like, to get up early. But later. It, it, no, but it was I, a Friday a great, night, so I didn't work on fun, Saturday. It's a great fun place. Yeah. But, you know, there's certain things that I do in, in my house as well. Oh, everything you do in your house. Is... But I mean, that's why I had all the doors put in. So we have an open movement of energy. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't feel like a stagnant box. Yeah. Where energy just festers in corner or whatever. Yeah. I open it up and I like, I just like that movement. So what if somebody comes in and they say, I want my hair a certain way. And you and you think, no, they're going to look way better this other way. Right. The color, the cut, whatever. How do you deal with someone like that? I then I break it down and am very technical. And I go, "Listen, you, that style you like is super cute. Uh-huh. Let's look at your face shape. You have a diamond face shape." Right. This particular style you like kind of works better for a square shape. So I think we should oh. really work with something that's going to really emphasize your good and minimize right. your not so good. Like, what do you what do you want to hide? Right. What do you want to really showcase? Right. But and that's do, what I do on but shows do they for listen contestants. To you? Do they yeah. listen to you? Well, and then people probably listen. Yeah. People probably like when you help them on a show or something. They probably keep their hair that way, right? 
Um, this this woman <laughs> who I was on X Factor, she kept that hair, that same inverted bob. I'm like, it's time to let it go. Elsa, Aww. let it go. We have new things we can do for you. And she goes, I was just she goes, I just really like it so much. And and she goes, and you taught me how to style it, so I'm really good with it. And I go, okay, well we can keep that frame, but uh-huh. let's update it. Let's do some, you know, chip into it, layers or whatever. But they love that because they're like, we You we do makeovers. You, you yeah, do makeovers. American Idol. That's all I did. American Idol was I know. It's all Look makeovers. at all those people. Like I mean Kelly Gen- Clarkson and Jennifer Jennifer Hudson. Hudson. All of them. Catherine McPhee. You Carrie did their Underwood, hair and all of, all of them. All Jordan of them. Sparks, Fantasia, Clay Aiken. You know what I mean? It's, wow. It's, it's a lot of transformations. But I, and this is what I talk about when I do, you know, beauty college lectures and stuff like that. I'm right. like, it's not like Oprah, where you want an, where you want that instantaneous aha moment with this transformation. Right. This show goes on <laughs> for 13 weeks, right? Right. Your hair grows at half an inch a month. Oh my! So it's a good way where I can transition somebody slowly, do frequent changes, right? You know, minimal little changes frequently, and just to alter that look. Like season two, Clay Aiken, when they showed his audition photo and mm-hmm. the finale photo, people lost their minds because it he looked, looked like so com- much better. He now. looked like a completely different person, and no one would have, would mm-hmm. expect that kind of makeover from a guy. But you are so gifted because. There's so many different hair colors and people of different nationalities and races and right. and shapes and sizes. And it's amazing that you could it's do kind of all that. Well, you know, and the thing, too, is, again, you always want to emphasize the good and minimize the not so good. Do they hug you when they're done? They're so happy. Um, I'll, yeah, a lot. A lot <laughs> like my them, private clients. They're, like they're, 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 they're such grateful. Great friends, yeah. yeah. And you know what's really interesting is when you're on a show – and I get it. You're a contestant. There's millions of people judging you, watching you. Right. All I say is, trust me. This is my job. Right. You go dance your ass off because I can't do that. But right. I can make you look amazing. And just trust my guidance. Because uh, it's like Vidal Sassoon. If you don't look good, I don't look good. And then how do you do it so their hair doesn't fall in their face when they're dancing? Oh dancing God. is the hardest dance, thing to do. Dancing hair. Like, okay, so so you think you can dance. I have a roadmap of hair for each contestant. So let's say you're a contestant on So You Think You Can Dance. In a two-hour live show, you're going to have four costume changes. That's four hair changes. And it's all quick change. A lot of times we'll have 10 minutes or less to change you. And that's not just hair. That's makeup and wardrobe. So if I can hide something in your hair Uh that you can wear for the first look, but I might need that for the third look. For example, like the first one might be a contemporary classic. Right. Perfect. The second one where your hair is long and flowy and very ethereal goddess. How do you do that? Very beachy waves with three-quarter iron. It's pretty fab. But then let's say the second the second number is a pony like a ponytail. You're going to do a hip hop or, or whatever. Uh-huh. But then let's say the third one is a period piece, and you're going to do uh, like a waltz, and you wanted something elegant. And we're going to do a French twist. Well, what I would do is I would hide a cornrow scalp braid from your crown to your nape, hide it. You'd never see it when you're doing dance and anything else. Uh But then when you come in for a quick change, I can do that French twist. But now I have something to actually anchor to, Mm -hmm. lock it in, and sew. Because we sew almost every style in. Sew? So I have plastic needles and thread, and I will sew it to a braid. I will sew that okay, style. That in. is really was that your idea? That's pretty yeah, brilliant. Yeah, because I was like, I, I mean, <clears throat> that's pretty brilliant. Every pin has to have a purpose. If you're just jamming a pin, and that's gonna fly out. Everything needs to be purposeful and have a meaning. And why are you doing it? And when when you talked about, I know you had products. So, what was what were you talking about? The well, I product? had the, the Instyler is a rotating curling iron. Yeah, what is that? So I'm one of the partners for that. It's um, is it you, big or a little? Yeah, well, there's a three quarter inch, and that's what I use a lot of. But there's also an inch and a quarter. But you can get it at Bed Bath and Beyond, Ulta, Target, Walmart, Sears, and now it's on Amazon. But you, that ha- oh, you did you hear that, you guys? Just in, it's Instyler. You can Google and actually, if you Google my name and Instyler, you'll get a ton of how to videos for that tool. Really? Yeah, it's great. Is it a brush on it or it's is a it- rotating curling iron? 
with the brush attachment, but the brush is just for like guiding. Right. So like the first set of brushes aligns the hair, so uh -huh. it passes evenly over the barrel. And that second set of brushes gives you that shine and polish. And that, you know, that's what I took on QVC, and I was on QVC for years selling that. And I it was, know. And it was a you, ton of fun. you had a huge, like, it was good. Ride there. And it was fun. <clears throat> and what is your website so people um, can see you and come visit my, you? And... My website is HollywoodHairGuy.com. HollywoodHairGuy.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know so... how I got that? How? Do you know, remember Kurt the Cyber Guy? Yes, the blonde guy. On KTLA. I know Kurt. I know Kurt. In, two, in 2002, he was doing a segment on mm -hmm. Idol, and he, I got him backstage uh -huh. to do an interview, and he called me Hollywood Hair Guy. And I'm not kidding. I called my brother Leon, number 12, and I go, we have to register this immediately. <laughs> did he? He did. He helped me do it right away, and I, that's kind of how just I'm known, like when I do a segment or anything like that. Hollywood Hair Guy. Oh my God! Says I could, it all. I could sit and talk to you forever. It's fun. Now I you're you're just so entertaining. Would would you come back and do a school for psychics? Because I have a feeling you'd be yes. amazing. I not a great student, but I would love. No, that. I think you would be an incredible student. And I just went to a party the other night, and I don't know if she'll do it or not. But I don't. I don't want to say who yet, but. Somebody well known, but we'll get somebody else to do because I usually have two people together because it just makes it but better. I, but are, you're really busy. Tell people what I you're doing I about the period pieces. Well, okay, good. Because my my I'm a big goal person, right? You know? and <laughs> He he works harder than anybody I know. Well, I think that's just the work ethic from a big family on a right, farm. from milk and cows. I mean, just we had to do it. Yeah. I'm like, how many eggs do you want? I'll go pick them up. <laughs> you know, just imagine if you had to scramble three dozen eggs every morning for breakfast. Uh-huh. Like, Gosh. It's an, it's an army. That's... But, you know, just building, building, um, you know, like a, a training academy for other hairdressers so they can learn different tips and tricks and i i love doing things that are not normal right so like if i go to walmart i will spend two hours in there looking at things that i could use in hair mm -hmm. so you know the kitchen liners yes that you put in your drawers and your shelves right. it's cushy there's there's right. holes so i buy those uh -huh. and just imagine i cut a 10 inch by like four inch strip uh-huh and I have braiding hair. You can get it for like four bucks a pack. I get a crochet needle and I crochet that hair through each one of those holes through the mat. How smart is that? You're like the Martha Stewart of hair. Gay arts and crafts. <laughs> and I did that on So You Think. We did a whole fairy pixie number. And that's how I won a Guild Award for 706, the hair union that I'm part of. It's like, like, it's like the SAG Awards for a union. You won a Guild Award. Two of those. So, And it's great because it's just you're doing something that's uniquely special and different. That somebody's like, oh, I would have never thought to use my kitchen liners. for." <laughs> Are you busy in November? Uh how busy are you on a Friday night? Okay, we'll do a we'll do a school for psychics. We'll talk to Nicole in the office. Yeah, no, I'm all about it. I I am, think it's really intriguing. Yeah, and I think it just comes naturally oh, to me, but I just don't. I know I know it how. comes naturally to you, and also you're so guided when you know how to do people's hair. That comes, you know, when we're intuitive, it comes from a creative place of wisdom. And it comes when I read, it comes through me, not from me. So when you see somebody and you get all the energy of what needs to be done, when I always say when you use logic, common sense and intuition, you get your best answers. Right. So when you see that, it just comes through you and you know, boom, I've got to do this. But there's because also if, another element to that. What? Because I'm one of the few professions where I'm licensed to touch you. Oh. So I feel your energy. I feel your energy stronger than I get anything else. How? That's profound. Look, I get gay bumps again. Look at that. <laughs> that because it's that true. Bumps. It's like <laughs> some Because sometimes, you know, I put the cape on and I just put my hands on their shoulders. Yeah. And I'm like, let's just get centered. Let's talk about this. What do you have in mind today? And then you become almost one with them in mm -hmm. a way. And a lot of times, and if they are, it's L.A. You right. come and you sit down in the chair and you have this... I mean, you're, it's traffic. It sucks. I get it. It's like it can make you crazy. Right. And so they sit in my chair and I, you know, I get them all caped. I, I have my hands on their shoulders and I make it very, uh, I make my breath very meaningful. I don't, I don't like I have asthma, but I'm very <laughs> conscientious 
of my breathing. Right. And it's really kind of interesting because a lot of times they sync with my breathing. It's like when you're with a if if you it's want like to make your, a baby it's like or your a baby dog, right here, right? Is syncing with your in sync the, with the breath. energy. Yeah. That's so wise of you. So Everybody's going to want to fire their hairdressers and call it, you. But it all, but it, I mean, it all kind of, it all works. I and I nobody ever taught me to do that. I just did it because it it helped me protect myself sometimes from that chaotic energy too. Right, and also they're nervous when they sit in your seat sometimes, mm. or they and might the, be. You know, new it's funny people. because when they first come in, they they're a little nervous, but within ten minutes, they're good. Okay, so tell us your website again. So Hollywood Hair Guy. Guy, not gay. Hollywoodhairguy.com. Yes. Thank it's you so one. much for being oh here. God, I love this, this is so, so much. much fun. Did you have fun? It's the oh best. Oh my God, you're coming back. Done. Okay. Don't go away, everybody. I'm gonna do some readings by phone. So start calling in. I think I see the the phones are lit up already. Yes, light those it, phones up. Thank you, Dean. Thank hey, you. Everybody. You probably think I only do individual readings, but sometimes I get a message for everybody. And I wrote a poem that was channeled through me, and I'd like to read it to you. It's called Until We Meet Again by Char Margolis, A Message from Heaven. My work is done, it's time to leave. Know that I am also missing you as you grieve. I completed my karma on the earth, and now it is time for my rebirth. I'm flying with eagles and dancing on stars. Please know that I haven't gone far. The love we have will carry us through until the day I am again with you. What an amazing journey this passing over can be. I am in good company. I know you hurt, but please trust me. Our journey together is for eternity. So until the day our souls reunite, stay peaceful and well and use your spirit sight. I will bring you signs from up above, a butterfly, a bird, my sign of love. Don't worry about me, I'm in good hands. Stay strong, stay positive, and continue to pray. When it is your natural day to graduate from the earth, look for me in the bright white light. We have completed our purpose and all will be right. This is handmade, it's signed by me, it's an affordable gift for any occasion. Just go to Char.net and click on store. Thank Hi you. everybody, it's Char. Well, many of you have asked if I teach psychic intuition, and I do. Everybody has a sixth sense. Everybody has an ability to prevent problems and attain goals in their lives. And I'd love to teach you. Just go to char.net, C-H-A-R-N-E-T, and join one of my classes and call Nikki and she'll help you out. Remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Hey, everybody. Okie dokie, we're back. And um, I just want to tell Tony that I got something on my Facebook last week that somebody thanked you and because you 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 picked somebody's name and you don't I know you, I mean you picked a telephone number and you don't know who you're talking or picking and they said Tony must be a wonderful man I Aww. said yes he is well, thank you. yeah so thank you okay I just needed to tell you because I haven't seen you all week okay miss you more okay hi Michael. Hello? Hi, Char. Hi. Could you put it a little louder? Hi. Thank you so much for calling. How are you? I'm good for you. I'm good. Thank you. I just have to... I'm sorry, but the, the sometimes the sound needs to be a little more there. There we go. Okay. So just be open about everybody living and deceased. Okay, Michael? Okay. Okay. So I see somebody else that's an M initial around you. Do you have somebody else that's an M Around your family? Or is there a middle name? Uh, oh, there, yeah. My, my sister's name starts with an M. And is she spelled M-A or M-I? Mm, if you spell it out, is it M-A? M-A. Wait, no, M neither. 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 Okay, neither but it starts with an M. Is there an, yeah. e, is there an E in her first name? 
Yeah, uh, no. Okay, I'm not sure what who, what I'm getting with her, but um. I, I'm 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 a little mixed up. Are you close with her? No. No. Okay. Um, is there an L in her name at all? No. Okay. I'm I'm a little off with this with her, but I kind of feel like maybe I'm not picking up on her because her energy maybe is not the healthiest for you. And was there also an argument about with when somebody crossed over in your family? No, I don't have, well, no, I don't have that. I have, <laughs> this is, I'm, this is funny because I'm glad that, that we're connected again because you read for me before. Oh, I have. On your radio show. Yeah, on your radio show. And you picked up on some stuff from my past and it was spot on. But I really, really, really want to know about career stuff. Okay. If I can Okay. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, because, uh, but I, I need to know, did, was there a new opportunity already coming up for you that you know of? There's the possibility. Yes. And is, do you know, is there a J or L person that you would, were going to be connecting with or an S or C? Um, an, or, an S. Is the S a, fer, a person, the S? Yeah. And is it, is that a female, the S? Or yes. is it S with an, a, an N in, in the name or an R in it? An R. Like, is it S-H? Or is it like a Sarah? Yeah. Is it like a Sarah? Oh, or? actually, the, so there's like the, I mean, the recruiter is S-H. The person that I would be interviewing with also has an S, S with an R. And is, is there and is with the, an R in it? Is the yeah. is the S H a female though? Yeah. Is it like a Sharon or Sherry or Shirley or Shelley? Shelley. Okay. So I have a feeling. I feel like you need to win her over, though. Did you meet her yet? We've emailed and we had a phone interview. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it and it went pretty well, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you. I feel like you still need to win her over because she's going to ask you about maybe doing some tasks that you may not be totally familiar with. So I feel like you need to just be open minded about doing all that. Okay. And I feel like there's an opportunity with this. I, I keep getting an L. Who's an L? Or A-L or E-L? Oh, uh, um, yeah. Is there anyone who's like a Laura or? Okay, uh, okay. I, this could be somebody that you're going to end up working with. There's an L initial. I don't know if it's a Linda, okay. a Laura, or L. Is, are there a lot of people at L. this? Oh, there. I mean, I one of my friend, a friend of mine. Her name starts with L. Is it? Is it L? Is it? Is it L with an R in it or an S? No, no. Or but an, there's a. It sounds like. <laughs> like a, a C? Is it a C? Or a Z? Is it like Liz or no. Lu Lucy or something like that? Okay. I don't know the name. It's Lacey. Lacey. Okay. Um, that's okay, but I think that the L that I'm getting is going to be something with the new business thing. And there's a number 7 or 17 involved with this. So I don't know if 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 you start on the 7th of the month or the 17th or 27th there's a 7 or a 17 involved with the opportunity for the new business opportunity okay okay so good luck with that <laughs> thank you so much okay thank you so much for calling bye bye of course bye bye okay let's get somebody else in here Okay, hi. 
Hi, Char. My name is Amy. Oh, hi, Amy. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's awesome to listen to you and hear your show, and I can't believe I got through. I'm well, really, it feels so grateful. I'm honored that you even want to talk to me. So just be open about everybody, Amy, living and deceased, okay? Okay. Um, okay. I, I see somebody that's an A or M besides you. Is there another A or M family? Um, ooh, and M. Ooh. Did you have? A, uh, did you know your grandparents? I can think of off the top. Did you know? Did you know your grandparents' names? Not on my dad's side, only on my mom's. Okay, I I feel like there's an A or M person. You don't know them. And the other thing, my Megan. Pardon? Uh, my mom's name is Megan, but she's still living. M is your is your mom? Okay, Megan. Okay, mm-hmm. it might be from her family too. I don't know, but. Don't say names, just say my mom's an M. Because I don't always know if I'm getting something from someone living or deceased, so, or about somebody living. No, that's okay, no problem. And there's also a J or G person. That is correct, that's my grandpa. Is is he a J or G? He's a J. Uh Is he spelled J-O or J-A? It's uh, it's like Gerald, but it's with a J. J, okay, Gerald. Yeah, don't say names. It's okay. All right. Okay, but he's deceased, right? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like he his spirit is around you. Who who lost a child? My sister Bethany. Bethany. Okay, and was this recently? Yes, sir. She just passed in December. Okay. The Wait, your sister passed. Her daughter. Her her daughter passed. Okay, is Uh and Bethany is your sister or the? Uh huh. She's my little sister. Okay, and she lost her daughter. Yes, and and her daughter's name also starts with an M. I'm so dumb. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. I feel like the grandpa Gerald is keeping an eye on the daughter. And I feel like you need to tell your sister that mm-hmm. that that her daughter is being watched over and that she's not alone in heaven, that she went to a good place and that they're protect okay. they're protecting her. And okay. um do you what was there was there a burial or or was this a cremation? I can't it was a cremation. Okay. What what is it that did 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 your niece still have like a stuffed animal or does your sister have your niece's stuffed animal or She does. Does she yes. sit and hold her her stuffed animal and cry? She does, yes. What did you do that with her? No, I did not. That my sister received after um, my niece's passing a build a bear with her voice on it saying, "I love you, mommy." Yeah, because she's showing me your sister holding the stuffed animal and crying, and <clears throat> and she so excuse me. She knows she knows that gift was given to her, and and that's validation for me because she got it after. She crossed over. So, and your your yes. your sister cannot feel guilty. I feel like, did she feel responsible? She does. Yes. Yeah, she's she's not supposed to be. She she's not supposed to feel guilty. She did the best she could. And and it's not her fault. And it, it could not have been stopped. Her daughter was. It it just could not have been stopped. That's what they're telling me. And is, is there a big shirt that was your niece's that your sister wears? A shirt or a T-shirt, yes. a shirt or a jacket? She knows it. She- yeah, um, <clears throat> I have a poncho that was hers um, that's kind of big and it's kind of a, a big thing. And then I, we have like a lot of her clothing and things too. Mm-hmm. So please just tell your sister that she's at peace and she's okay. Thank you so much, Char. Oh, I'm so sorry. You called for uh, for this reason, didn't you? 
He did, yes. You Thank called you. you called about your niece. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. I, I knew somebody lost their child. I'm so so sorry. Thank Thanks you. so much. Sorry, I'm, I really I'm, appreciate I'm gonna it. I'm going to send prayers her way. Thank you so much for calling. It was meant to be you that you got in today for the call. It was meant to be. I, uh, I think so, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, you guys, I'm sorry that I can't take more callers because we got to wrap this up. But I will take, I'll try to make more time next week to take more callers. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching it. It means the world to me. And I, I want to thank Dean Benowitz and Tony and Nicole for helping and and Sunny and um, especially you guys who are watching Char Vision. I, I said to Nikki once, I said, I'll be happy if one person watches. And now when I see the phones lit up, it warms my heart. So thank you so much for your support and your love. And I love you guys. And remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. God bless you. Be well.